All right. Yeah. What is the most important question that you've asked Randy that you want us to hear? The most important question I could ask him that we've discussed, but I don't remember asking him a specific question. I've watched Randy for all these years. I think he is possibly the most gracious and humble person I've ever met. How do you maintain that before the Lord? How do you maintain? I've heard you teach on this. I've heard you give answers to this area. And uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm always so moved by, by how you You don't ever, you're not driven for the limelight. You're, you're driven for the people of God to experience what God intends for them to experience. You're, you're not driven for the size, the amounts, the dollars, the, any of those things. You're, 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 you have this drive to bring God the most fruit possible in your lifetime. And what seems to be driving this is, uh, is a humility that has a confidence in God. And um, I, I would like for you to address that. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Uh, you know, we don't. I have heard you talk about avoiding false humility, and that's because I. But I. I really have come from a very unlikely situation. You know, um, I was divorced at 19, 20, 22, told I'd never have a ministry, kicked out of seminary, said, don't come back, don't waste Baptist money or your time. So with that is a, a real mark in my life that to be able to do what I do. I'm very much aware this really was the grace of God. And so it's not a false humility. It really is, a, there's no way this should have happened. Yeah. To be, you know, to be a pastor of a little Baptist church and for Wimber to get what he gets. And there's so many people he could have, God could have told him, spoken to him. I really am aware of grace. Um, Having had a lot of grace necessary in my own life, it makes me want to be a person of grace and be gracious toward others. Um, I think one of the things, too, was as a little boy, my great uncle was a church guy to Cleveland, Pentecostal preacher. And my grandfather was just this former alcoholic that Jesus had saved and, and uh, delivered him from a lot of stuff and just was just humble guy, just who loved people. And it would always bother me when my great uncle would come over, we had these dinners together, Thanksgiving. I'd sometimes, when the rapture come, you're only gonna get that high off the ground because you smoke. Hmm. And, and, and my great uncle wasn't that loving. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a little bit pompous. And I remember as a little kid saying, I don't like that. <laughs> and I was like, I wasn't even nine years old. Just saying, I don't like that. Yeah, that's right. I like that. So in my life, ever since I've been a kid, there's been this value for humility. Yeah. And then as, as I first get called to preach, I, I, I'm reading, I keep seeing this passage that God will resist the proud and give grace to the humble. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and in due time he will exalt you. And I thought, Wow. Humility is where God can bless you. And when you lose it, you put a ceiling. So part of it has been a value. Uh, it's a just, a, I don't know how it got there, but it's been a value. Yeah. And I try to give God the glory, try not to take the glory, which is dangerous because there's another side of me was because issues of, you know, in my life as a kid growing up and the way, you know, my mother conceived me when she wasn't married to dad and, carried me in shame in the middle of a real religious area. There's areas that makes you broken, that makes you need affirmation, that makes you need attention, that makes you need to do well. Yeah. So naturally, I have to fight that because it's part of my natural makeup, to, mm -hmm. and I know I have that. Mm -hmm. So I try 
to, in the midst of it, say, Lord, I know I'm, I have a propensity to need this, but it really is part of I want him to get all the glory. 